Sorry, we're closed. Welcome to Miss Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the most impactful final episodes of TV shows that left their mark on the industry and audiences everywhere. It's the last episode, people. Do we really even need to tell you that there are spoilers ahead? He just called, he's on his way. Med's coming separately, she had to go to the doctor. Switch birth control. Number 10, Person to Person, Mad Men. Watching Don Draper throughout the show's seven seasons was a roller coaster, and his final moments on screen were monumental. When he left behind his work to concentrate on his personal journey, he had a revelation during a retreat in California. This led to his inspiration for the I'd Like to Buy the World a Coke campaign, aka one of the biggest ad campaigns ever. I'd like to buy the world a home and furnish it with love. Grow apple trees and honeybees and snow white turtle doves. I'd like to teach the world to sing, sing with me. We saw that the Don Draper we knew and loved was still there, even as he continued to try and battle his mental demons. Getting to see Peggy find love with Stan while Joan followed her career dreams was all just icing on the Mad Men finale cake. What are you doing? It's just a couple of little projects. Number 9. The Last New Heart. New Heart. This finale pulled the rug out from under us in the best way imaginable. Starring Bob Newhart, this show was his second successful sitcom, following The Bob Newhart Show. I, for one, think you're doing the right thing, Bob. I quit my job when I thought it was time, and look where it got me. Unemployed. <laughs> I'm behind you 100%, Bob. In the finale, Dick Loudon continued running Stratford in despite the town being turned into a golf course. While that may have seemed like a satisfying enough ending, the final scene provided one of the biggest twists in television history. Honey, <coughs> honey, wake up. You, you won't believe the dream I just had. Mm. After Dick was hit in the head with a golf ball, he woke up as his character from The Bob Newhart Show, laying in bed next to his wife from that series. He explained that everything was a dream, and needless to say, audience members everywhere were left floored. That settles it. No more Japanese food before you go to bed. <laughs> Number 8. The Finale. Seinfeld. Controversial, we know. While the finale split audience opinions, it was an undeniably clever way to bring back so many of the iconic characters that had popped up throughout the show. The Bubble Boy. <laughs> bubble Boy? That's right, the Bubble Boy. What's a Bubble Boy? He's a boy who lives in a bubble. <laughs> what the hell are you all looking at? As Jerry, Elaine, Kramer and George go to court after bystanding during a carjacking, plenty of the show's eclectic personalities made an appearance as character witnesses. State your name? Yev Kasim. Could you spell that, please? No. Next question. <laughs> How do you know the defendants? They used to come to my restaurant. It gave us an opportunity to reminisce on the best moments that happened throughout the series, while solidifying that the core four were, in fact, not the greatest people in the world. Plus, we always love when an ending calls back to the beginning, and this show did just that with the shirt buttons conversation. To me, that button is in the worst possible spot. Really? Oh, yeah. The second button is the key button. It literally makes or breaks the shirt. Look at it, it's too high. Number seven, the end, Lost. While this finale may have left a few stones unturned, it left its mark with viewers at home. Jack defeated the man in black and sacrificed himself to save the island after becoming the new protector of it. The last scene even mimicked the first, with Jack lying on the ground staring up at the sky. We finally learned what was going on with the Flash Sideways, and that it was a purgatory-like place for those who passed on from the island to gather together before going to the afterlife. Kate, she said we were leaving. Not leaving, no. Moving on. Although this finale was nothing short of a polarizing whirlwind, it was definitely an epic ending to a series that kept us guessing at every turn. Number 6. The Last One, Friends 
there were endless amounts of tear-jerking moments in this finale, and all of them made us grateful that we were along for the ride with this group of friends. Ross, wait, wait! What? What? Could you get me a muffin? Monica and Chandler unexpectedly became parents of two and prepared to move to the suburbs with Joey in tow. Meanwhile, Phoebe and Mike settled into married life. I want one. Oh yeah? Well, tell me which one. I'll try to slip it in my coat. <laughs> Seriously, you wanna make one of those? One? How about a whole bunch? Really? The showstopper of the episode, however, had to be the will-they-won't-they they couple of the century deciding to give it a go for real. I do love you. Oh, I love you too, and I am never letting you go again. Okay, because this is where I want to be. Okay, no more mess. I don't, don't want to mess this up again. No, me neither, okay? We are, we're done being stupid. Seeing the empty apartment at the end of the episode got us right in the feels, and we couldn't imagine a more fitting ending. Number five, one for the road. Cheers. Speaking of will they, won't they couples, Sam and Diane's fate was finally realized in this finale. You didn't think I was gonna wait around for you for the rest of my life, did you? I didn't say that. I didn't say you did. We also saw Woody become a councilman, Cliff get promoted, Norm get a job with the city, and Rebecca get married. But when Sam and Diane almost ran away together, they realized, as Norm said, that Sam needed to stay in Boston to be with his one true love. You know. Yes. I think we both know. Rather than Diane, he chose to stay at the place where everyone knew his name, at the bar, with his friends who had become his family. The second most watched finale of all time, it was one of the most satisfying endings to a TV series we can possibly think of. Number four, Felina, Breaking Bad. A show that had us on the edge of our seats through five seasons had to have a show-stopping ending. They're not coming back, not after tonight. What's tonight? Walter White left no strings untied before his inevitable demise, as he assured his family would get the money they were due, and he managed to save Jesse. He also brought justice to those who had wronged him and faced the music while reminiscing on his time as Heisenberg. Vince Gilligan's genius for creating captivating television was also demonstrated in Better Call Saul, the spin-off he co-created, where the finale showed us Jimmy McGill's story coming to an exciting conclusion. You had him down to seven years. Yeah, I did. But it was Felina that left us feeling like we had witnessed a magical slice of television. Number three, everyone's waiting, six feet under. This final episode saw the characters dealing with something all too familiar to them, death. But this time, it was one of their own who passed away. Too bad you don't believe in anything. Or you could pray. This is exactly what I was afraid of. Everyone dealt with Nate's death differently, with Brenda and David struggling the most. The flash-forward sequences showed everyone moving on with their lives, and even in their deaths, they all stayed true to themselves and got the endings that were fitting for them. This show taught us that there is beauty in life and in death, and watching the fates of the characters get revealed one by one was the perfect way to encompass the show's message as it wrapped up each storyline. Number two, Made in America, The Sopranos. The Sopranos is widely regarded as one of the best series of all time, and the finale was perhaps the most talked about part. What looks good tonight? Mm. I don't know. The last scene saw The Sopranos in a diner, while tensions rose as the end of the episode drew near, and then 
Suddenly, nothing. The open-ended, cut-to-black ending has been discussed for years, and will probably be debated for many more to come. Did it mean Tony was abruptly killed? Was there simply no more to say about this mobster's chaotic life? One thing we know for sure is we can't hear Don't Stop Believin' anymore without thinking of this iconic final scene. Focus on the good times. Don't be sarcastic. Isn't that what you said one time? Try and remember the times that were good. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honourable mentions. 30. The Wire. Whether hopeful or bleak, everyone faced the music in the end. Let's go. All good things. Star Trek The Next Generation. Captain Picard saved the day one last time. I should have done this a long time ago. You were always welcome. So, five card stud, nothing wild, and the sky's the limit. The Judgment, The Fugitive. Dr. Richard Kimball's story came full circle in this satisfying finale. Hey! Hey. Tuesday, September 5th, the day the running stopped. Whenever you're ready, the good place. The group moved on one at a time in this poignant conclusion. Do you mind if I stay here until you're gone? Only if you say that thing I taught you. I hate to see you walk through the final door at the edge of existence, but I love to watch you leave. There we go. The last show, the Mary Tyler Moore Show. A goodbye that felt like a hug you didn't want to let go of. Thank you for being my family. <laughs> <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Goodbye, Farewell and Amen. MASH. This finale was the most watched in the history of television for good reason. How do you feel? Like a hostage, how about you? Oh, same old stuff. This and that, ups and downs, <laughs> what can I say? Well, that pretty much covers it. Nice talking to you. After 11 seasons, Goodbye, Farewell and Amen was witnessed by well over 100 million viewers worldwide. And we can guarantee there were almost no dry eyes to be found in that audience. As the Korean War drew to an end after a ceasefire was called, storylines were wrapped up and saw the 4077th crew take down camp for the last time. Since this is our last evening together, I've been wondering what your lives will be like when all this is over. I thought it might be a good idea for each one of us to get up and tell everybody what we'll be doing next. As the characters said goodbye to one another, we got the closure that comes along with saying goodbye to them too. I miss you. I'll miss you. A lot. I can't imagine what this place would have been like if I hadn't found you here. The sight of that final message, written only visible from the air, never fails to make us tear up. Did any of these series finales leave you wanting more? Let us know which ones in the comments. How about you? What are you in for? Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft Auto? Don't steal any of my jokes. You suck! I'm gonna cut you! Hey, I don't come down to where you work and knock the license plate out of your hand. All right, Seinfeld, well, that's it. Let's go. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.